Hello everyone, welcome back to Kodamigo. In this video, we will learn how can we efficiently bind event handlers on DOM elements. First of all, let me define the HTML structure. For this particular tutorial, we will be using bootstrap. You can get the CSS from the getbootstrap.com. Let me define some HTML structure for the DOM elements. We have a simple unordered list and within this UL, we have three allies and each ally has one span. Now let's save this and try to run this with live server. Simply right click on the index.html file and click on open with live server. If you do not have live server installed, then go to extensions and search for live server. This live server is going to help you to run this index.html file on the local host. You will not also have to refresh the browser anytime when you make any change in this file. So let's go ahead and right click on the index.html and click on open with live server. As you can see that on the right hand side we have some HTML being rendered. Now let me apply some bootstrap classes on this HTML markup. Now we have this exact same HTML but we have applied some bootstrap CSS. Now let me save it. I can see the changes being reflected. I do not need to refresh the browser. So if I make any changes and save the file that will be reflected right on the browser. So that is the benefit of using live server. Now let's go ahead and add me one script tag within the head section and uh, I'm going to use document.addEventListener to attach DOM content loaded event on document which accepts one event handler. This event handler will be called as soon as our document has been loaded and passed. Next I'm using document.querySelectorAll to grab all the allies inside the UL we have. I can go ahead and print the number of allies we have. Since I'm going to use 4H because I need to apply or attach an event handler on every ally. So the return output is a node list not an array. So I'm converting this into array with the help of array.from method. Now I am using add event listener on every ally element and I am binding click event and supplying the event callback. This event callback will be called as soon as we click on ally. Inside the callback function, I am just printing out the target which going to be the ally clicked. Now let me save this program and open up the inspect mode. So you see that our program has grabbed three allies or these three DOM elements within the UL and if I click on these the event.target which is the span is being called. So in second example I click on the ally so ally was printed. So event.target refers to the DOM element on which the event was fired. Now there is nothing wrong with this program. Technically it is working fine. Now we are able to get the element on which we click but the problem is Imagine that there are hundreds or thousands of ally elements and we have to attach one event handler to those 1000 allies. That's going to be very very inefficient. That's going to slow down the performance. But luckily there is a way around in JavaScript. So instead of attaching one event handler per ally, we can attach just one event handler on the UL. So for this we will have to modify the script. Let's go ahead and start modifying this. The first change is I'm using query selector. Also, I no longer need to use array.from because we do not have node list. We have only single DOM element. So we can do away from array.from method. And now instead of attaching or binding this event handler on ally, we can use UL. In this case, we're also going to introduce another very important read-only property of event interface, which is event.current target. The difference between event current target and event dot target is that the first one would always refer to the DOM element on which the event handler has been attached. Let's go ahead and save this program and if I click on this third ally you see that you have two things printed out. The first is the current target which is the UL because we have attached the event handler on UL and second one is the event dot target that basically is the DOM element on which I clicked. 
if I had clicked on Li, I would have gotten Li instead of span. Now the best part of this code is that we have just one event handler instead of too many. This is going to be extremely helpful when we have a huge list of allies. Now before we leave, let me tell you one more important trick. So what if I want to know the index of the ally that I clicked. So we have three allies and I want to know the index of the ally clicked. So for this, let me first define a very simple logic. What I'm doing is here, if we clicked on the button, then I'm going to access its parent element. So here you see in the HTML markup, if we clicked on the span, then the parent element of a span going to be this ally. Otherwise, we actually clicked on the ally. So we don't need to do anything here. Next, I'm going to use the arrays index of method on this node list. So for this, I have to use this call method. This call method will utilize the index of method of arrays and will use them or call them on this node list. Second argument is the ally on which we clicked. So this whole expression will give us the index of the ally clicked. Now let me go ahead and change the HTML markup of the ally clicked. So if I click on first ally, you see that the zero is printed because its index is zero. If I click here somewhere on the ally, then you see that uh, its index is printed out. So this is all in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Yeah.